Okay, good evening everyone. This is Destination Fluency. My name is Alfredo and this is a program designed to help you improve your fluency. So in the very first scene we have these two characters here, Joey and Chandler. Okay, so what's the story? Now these two guys, they're friends, okay, and their names are Chandler this guy here at this point in the story Chandler has got a new job and he he works with advertising okay and Joey this other guy here okay and Joey this other guy here he is an actor okay Joey's an actor and Chandler works in advertising okay what about their past well in the past they used to live together okay they they shared an apartment they were they were flatmates and now at this point in the story Chandler is married to Monique and they live in this apartment here this is Chandler's apart apartment where he lives with Monica and Joey is a neighbor okay and he lives across the hall from them okay and the the, the context is basically this Chandler comes home from work and Joey is there almost inside his refrigerator because uh, Joey's like this, he's, he's, a, he's a neighbor, <laughs> but they're very close. And then he's always there, you know, stealing fr food from, from Chandler and Monica. It's almost like he's got nothing in his refrigerator at home. Okay, and then Chandler comes from, from work and he's got some news. So if you've never seen Friends and you, you don't know anything about the characters, that's enough information, that, that's enough context that should allow you to follow the story. Okay, so with that idea in mind, let's now watch the scene go. Hey, honey. Hey, sweetie. <laughs> Is Monica not here? No. Well, then I'll tell you. My agency was bidding for a big account and they got it. It's my first national commercial. Cool. Yeah, and I don't want to brag, but a lot of the ideas were mine. Hell, you weren't there. All the ideas were mine. <laughs> That's great. Hey, can you cast me in it? Oh, uh, I don't know. I really don't think you're right for the part. What do you mean? I could do anything. I'm a chameleon. Huh? <laughs> I'm old. <laughs> you're tired. Huh? I am hot. I'm cold. Huh? Come on. What can't I do? <laughs> First of all, bravo. <laughs> Uh, but I really don't think you're right for this. The part calls for a stuffy college professor. I can do that. Hello, I'm your professor. But I'm not busy thinking of important things or... professing. <laughs> I like to use... Oh, what's the product? Software that facilitates inner business networking e-solutions. <laughs> I'm cold. <laughs> But basically, what I want to show you is this. Okay, now we're gonna, you know about the context, right? We, we know a little bit about the story, but what I want to explore with, it, with you is actually this. So at this point in the story, basically, it's kind of, we have two types of audience, okay? So we have two types of, two different groups. Okay, we have the first group who understand more they understood what Chandler's news were and they understood what Joey's response was. And the second group, the group that understands more, is a group of people who have a vague idea of, of what Chandler was talking about, but they cannot really connect with what Joey said. You know, they understand a few words and uh, they have an idea of what Chandler was talking about. So, for example, if I were to ask, okay, guys, was Chandler talking about, I don't know, about his relationship with Monica, about his marriage? No, teacher, he was not. Okay, uh, was Chandler talking about a, a new university course that he was doing? No, he was not. So this group of people, they have an idea. Uh, they have a pretty good idea of what Chandler was talking about. But the, there, it seems that there is a disconnection between what Chandler said and what Joey was talking about. Like I said, okay, so here I'm talking about a group of people that pick up a scene like that 
watch without subtitles and they understand very little so and then i want to warn you that this technique that i'm going to explore with you today is not for those people who like the idea of going back watching very small scene scenes and stopping at every syllable at, at every little word like a small preposition or something that they can't understand and then they stop and they go oh, oh wait a minute i didn't understand that word stop stop let's go back and so on no that's not the idea that's not the the methodology that i want to explore with you that's not the technique the technique here is you pay you play through you play you 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 work with small scenes but you play through the scene until you get to the end of it when you get to the end you do what what i did here you stop okay and then you ask yourself okay what what was i able to understand okay and like i said we have two groups audience one the first group understand more they understand that joey the chandler had some news and they understood how that caused a response a response on joey and in the second group people who understand less they have a vague idea of what chandler was talking about and at this point you might be saying okay Alfred, so that's great that's a very good tip it's not helping me much i already know that i already know that i'm not doing well so what do you propose well here's the key what i propose is this let's keep going let's move forward in other words let's watch the following scene and let's see what happens because you see there's a chance that by watching the second scene you're going to understand parts of it that will clarify the story to you in other words we'll make the first part of the story perhaps a little bit clearer but i'm not guaranteeing because that doesn't happen all the time but i'm inviting you i'm suggesting i'm asking you to give yourself a chance okay allow yourself a chance allow yourself to do that you have nothing to lose so let's watch the second one hey guys hi oh any word on casting yet joe i told you you're just not right for the part what do you mean rich don't i seem like a professor you'd buy some kind of e crap from <laughs> i'm sorry this sounds like something i'm never going to be interested in <laughs> look come on please it's not like i'm asking you for some crazy favor this is what i do for a living i am a professional actor Oh, man, I'm two hours late for work. <laughs> Look, here's a copy of my reel. It's got all the commercials that I've been in. Joe. Look, uh, just watch it. If you don't like it, you don't pass it on to your bosses. Fine. Thank you. <laughs> work, Joe. Damn it! <laughs> what am I going to do now? just pass the tape along he's not right for the part so if i suggest to my bosses are going to think i'm an idiot and that's something they should learn on their own no, just tell joey that you watched the tape and you liked it but your bosses didn't then that way you're the good guy and they're the bad guy that's good i liked it they didn't <laughs> joey for god's sake go to work so scene number two so in the spirit of you know playing through each scene without stopping and trying to extract as much as possible we're going to try to do the same thing here okay so a little bit about context again scene number two okay so we have again two groups of people we have some students who understood more some some who understood less my objective here is to help those who understand less because those students who understand less usually they feel more frustrated of course okay but so let's talk about the context first well what what can we extract from from this most people know this for sure well we know that they were meeting at central park the cafe that usually go to joey was there chandler was there there was there's another person there rachel was there but for the purpose of this exercise i'm going to suggest that you guys ignore rachel for now because i mean the part of the scene involving the conversation with Rachel is a little bit more complicated. So for now, we're gonna ex we're gonna ignore her. Okay. So basically, at this point, what what can we understand? We can understand that Joey asked him a question, 
like he, he was asking for a favor. He was like making a request. And even if we don't know exactly what he was asking, we can, I mean, most people get that Chandler's response was a negative one. He responded to Joey in a kind of negative way, okay? And then in the middle of the scene, because Joey was making a request, he was insisting on what he was asking, he, he gave something to Chandler. And then he asked Chandler to do something with that object that he gave him. Okay? Right. And then about, let's think about the audience. Okay, about our two groups. Okay. Now, group number one is a group of students who feel more comfortable and understand that, that, what that object is okay so group number one is a group of students who understand what the object is that joey gives to chandler and they understand what the request is the second group the group that understand less they're not sure you know they're, they're really not sure what that object is at this point they really don't know what it is and when it comes to the request in other words what what joey is asking chandler to do we, we have a bit of a, of, a, of a mixed group here because in this group, we, we may, because of the, the words that they use, some people understand, some people don't, we have a situation in which in this group we have another division. We have a group of people who understood what the request was. They understood what Joey was asking, but there's also a group of people who did not, did not understand what Joey wanted, okay? Okay, and then, once again, I suppose you might be saying, okay, Alfred, that's very nice. So now we've seen two scenes, and if I'm in the second group, I'm almost as lost as I was in the first scene. Yes, I understand that, but bear with me, because... We're halfway through the, the, the technique. We're halfway through the exercise. Okay, so at, at this point, you, you would be tempted to go back and watch the first scene again, or perhaps repeat the second one. But my advice to you, bear with me, trust me, is don't do that. Give yourself a chance, you know. Uh, put a little bit more faith on you. Believe that you can. And, and then try to focus on what you've got so far. So if you understood very little, maybe you're in the group that understood, okay, in the very first scene, Chandler had some news, and I think it was about work. In the second scene, because of that, that particular news about work, Chandler works with advertising, Joey is an actor, he makes a request there in the cafe, and he gives him an object. And even if you're not sure what that object is, and trust me, a lot of people get confused about that. I, I was doing a test with another student the other day, and that student thought it was a book, you know, because it was kind of a, kind of squarish like this, you know, it looked like a little box. So it might have been a, a book. Well, so then, again, you might be asking, okay, Alfredo, what do you suggest? Well, I suggest we play on. So in other words, we're going to play the third scene. And this time, we're going to see if there's anything in the third scene that clarifies, that makes the first two scenes a little bit clearer. Let's have a look. 